here's how we can create convincing light rays using nothing more than a little bit of Lightroom mask. If you want to follow along, feel free to download the raw file from the link in the description of this video. And now let's begin. As always, we are going to start with the basic adjustments first. So let's expand the basic panel. I'm going to change the profile to Adobe Landscape just to bring up the base saturation. Then we need to prepare the image to later add the light ray effect. What that means is I want the base image to be rather dark and later on add specific shapes of light to create a convincing light ray effect. So first off, I'm going to bring down the highlights. This will reveal a lot more details in the sky, making the upper part a lot darker. Then I'm also going to drop the shadows and I'm going to drop them quite a bit, kind of underexposing the whole image on purpose. Of course, I don't want to introduce any clipping in the darkest areas. To counter that, I'm going to slightly bring up the blacks. Perfect. Looking at Instagram, you can see we are close to clipping, but we're not over the edge yet. Then what I'm also going to do is to already introduce a bit of contrast by using the whites slider. I'm going to crank it up a bit, introducing some more brightness in the brightest areas of this scene. But I also don't want to really overdo it because we're going to add light to specific areas with the masking adjustments. I'm also going to bring up the texture to introduce a little more sharpness. I'm going to add some clarity for midtones contrast, and I'm going to also add a bit of dehaze just for a little more punch. And there we already have the basic adjustments. Let's compare to before real quick. You can see the whole shot got a lot darker. That's exactly what we want because we're going to create the light ourselves. And we're going to do that now with masking. So let's open up the masking panel. Now how this works is first I will be creating a light that will hit the foreground. Then we need light on the subject and parts of the forest behind it. And once we have set this up, we can create the light ray effect coming in from the left side of the image. So let me start with something simple. I'm using a linear gradient, which I'm applying on the very near foreground. I want to make this area darker, adding some kind of shadow effect to the landscape. I'm going to very gently bring down the exposure. That's already enough to make the foreground a little bit darker. Then let's add light to the foreground. I'm going to create a color range mask. And with that color range mask, I'm going to target the green tones of the grass. Let's click right in here. You see, we get a pretty good selection. We need to further modify it a bit. I'm going to add a brush. And with that brush, I want to make sure to select all of that field right there in the distance. I'm also covering the foreground right here because there are a few gaps. And I want to make sure this part is selected as well. And now we have targeted the whole ground. Next up, we need to subtract a linear gradient with which we can get rid of the shadow we have introduced in the previous step. That's very important because we want to add light and we don't want to add light right here where we have introduced darker tones. By doing this, we're taking this area out. To create this light effect, all we need to do is to bring up the exposure. And just like that, we can introduce light to the foreground. We can push this a little further by increasing the whites and the shadows. All right, beautiful. I also want this light effect to be a little bit warmer. So what I'm going to do to achieve that is to bring up the temperature, making the foreground just slightly warmer this way. Okay, and that's looking great. Now for the next step, I want this light in the foreground to be a little bit more dynamic. That means I want the light on the left side to be brighter than on the right side. Let me duplicate this mask. I'm going to right click on it and choose duplicate mask. Of course, we need to reset those settings. So I'm just double clicking on these little pins. And then I'm also going to modify it a little further. I'm going to subtract a linear gradient and I'm taking out all of the right side like this. With this mask, I can again bring up the exposure and thus we will make the light on the left side stronger than it is on the right side. And you can also spot the shadow we have introduced in the foreground, which will help make this little chapel in the center stand out more. Okay, that's looking awesome. Next up, I'm going to choose a select objects mask here. Very important, make sure to activate the rectangle select mode just giving us better results. And with that mode active, I'm going to draw a rectangle around the subject. That's looking good. And now I'm going to bring up the exposure as well, making the subject brighter. Okay, nice. 
Of course, due to this heavy effect, the scene does look kind of strange. That's because the forest in the back is way too dark for this effect to make sense. So we need to change that. I'm going to create a new mask. Again, I'm going to choose select objects and I'm going to draw a rough rectangle around that whole forest in the back. You see, this works pretty good. Now I still want to modify this mask. I'm going to subtract a linear gradient because again, I want the left side of this forest to be brighter than the right side. So I'm going to take out a good chunk of that forest and I'm also going to subtract a brush. Let's make the feather a little bit lower and I'm going to brush along the treetops here because otherwise this edge might be a little bit visible. Just roughly brushing along here. Okay, now what we're going to do again, we're going to bring up the exposure first, introducing some light on that forest. That's looking good. I'm also going to bring up the shadows. Since we're working with a lot of darker tones within this mask, I'm also going to bring up the whites. And let's carefully raise the blacks and introduce some more temperature, making the light on those trees warmer as well. Okay, I still think I need to modify this mask. You can see along those edges, the mask is very obvious, so we don't want that. Next up, we're going to introduce the light ray itself. Therefore, we are going to start with a linear gradient. I'm going to drag it up from the bottom and I want to try to fit the light angle coming in from the sky, something like this. And I want to make sure the end of the linear gradient is hitting the bright area of the foreground for it to make sense. Let's rotate it a little further like this. Okay. Next, of course, we want to get rid of the shadow in the foreground because that's an area where the light ray isn't supposed to be. Again, I'm subtracting a linear gradient and I'm just taking out that shadow. All right, that's looking good. Another area which I don't want to be affected by this light ray is the sky up there. I don't want to overexpose this area. I'm going to subtract and let's choose select sky. That should do the job. And finally, I don't want that light ray to be evenly visible. So I want it to be stronger on the left side than it is on the right side. Again, we need to subtract a linear gradient for that purpose. And I'm going to mask out pretty much all of the right side from this mask. And now we should be left with a perfect mask to introduce such a light ray. We are going to bring up the exposure first. Wonderful. I'm also going to bring up the whites. Then to make the light ray soft and smooth, I'm going to bring up the blacks. And again, I want the light of it to be warmer. So let's bring up the temperature. Perfect. Let me deactivate the light ray mask to see the difference from before to after. That's already looking pretty convincing. There's one thing bothering me. It's the bright foreground on the left side. I need to tone it down. So I'm going to go back to masks, mask number two and I'm going to drop the whites a little further down so we don't end up with clipping in here. And let's also drop the shadows a bit. Okay, that's looking much better. Back to the light ray effect. Another thing we can do to make it more convincing is we can use a radial gradient and just add a little stronger glow on the far left side. So let's make it nice and big like this. And again, we are going to rotate it to fit the light's direction. And I'm going to place the center of this radial gradient outside of the image, kind of pointing towards the subject. So kind of like that. For a soft light effect, I'm going to bring up the blacks. Wonderful. And this time I'm also going to bring down the dehaze. I kind of want this effect to be very strong. So I'm going kind of crazy with the negative dehaze. You can see this is a very heavy effect. I do think it looks super cool, however. So let's see if we need to place it a little differently. Maybe like this. All right. We could fine tune this radial gradient as well. I'm going to subtract a select sky mask just to not overdo it with the sky right here in this spot. I don't want this area to be super bright and almost clipping. So that's kind of important. And that's pretty much how we can introduce a light ray using nothing more than Lightroom. This works pretty good. Now, one thing I want to do for this image is to separately target the sky. I do think it could be a little bit brighter. So what I'm going to do is to bring up the whites just a little bit. Always pay close attention to the histogram to not overdo it. Let's see if we could also use some contrast in here, making the mountains pop a little more. All right. I'm also going to use a color range mask with which I'm going to target the blues of the sky right here. 
I want to bring down the refine slider a bit, so only really targeting the blues this way. And I'm going to subtract a linear gradient, taking out everything that's the landscape in the foreground. I want the blues to be more intense, so I'm going to crank up the contrast and I'm going to bring down the blacks. Perfect. And that's the image after the masking adjustments. Now let me turn off all the masks so we can see the huge transformation from before with our base settings applied to after. Huge improvement. Of course, that's a very heavy effect. I prefer it this way, but I can understand if you're not into these kind of heavy edits. Let's continue with a little bit of color grading. I'm going to open up the color mixer for that. I'm going to work on the luminance and we can bring up the green luminance, which will kind of make the foreground brighter. And I do want to bring down the blue luminance to further add some more punch to the sky. Wonderful. Let's also head into the saturation tab. I do want to bring down the green saturation notch because it's kind of overwhelming at this point. And I also want to bring down the blue saturation notch. Okay, nice. Then let's open up the color grading panel for some split toning. Here I want to use the highlights and the midtones to add a very subtle warm tone to the highlights. So let's set up the hue. I'm going with a warm color tone like this. And let's slightly raise the saturation. Okay, as I said, it's very, very subtle. So I'm just using very low amounts of saturation here. The same goes for the midtones. I'm going to set up the hue first and let's bring up the saturation. All right, nice. That's it for the color grading already. Not going to go into the calibration tab for this image, but of course I want to sharpen it. So let's open up the details panel and as always bring down the radius, increase the details, add masking while holding down the R key. And then let's bring up the amount of sharpening and we are done editing this scene. So I hope this tutorial on how to create a light ray in Lightroom will be helpful for your images. Let me know what you think about this technique. Also, if you have any questions left, feel free to write a comment and thank you so much for watching this video.